welcome to open day of School of Business. Uh, today, oh, wait. today we, we are going to talk about uh, what it's like to study a master's degree in the School of Business. Keep in mind that you can send questions to the panelists in the chat and in the end of this presentation, we will have a little Q&A where we will try to answer as many questions as we can regarding the time we have. Also, there will be a webinar uh, of the admission services next Friday, so every questions regarding the admission to Alto University, you can ask them on Friday, or you can also contact them at admissions at alto.fi. Uh, now it's time to meet who we are. I am Milica, I will be your host today. I am the first year master's um, student of architecture here on Alto, and this is my first year with the Alto squad. And now I will ask my panelists to, to tell you more about themselves. Hey guys, uh, my name is Arib and I'm studying currently information service and management at Alta University. I'm a first year as a master's student and I recently graduated. Uh, I did my bachelor's at, at the McKinley campus, uh, also at Alta University and uh, excited to see many of you join from different areas of the world. Uh, I think this is gonna be a really fun discussion to let you know more about our studies. Hello, everyone. A warm welcome also uh, from my side. My name is Rafael or Rafa, whatever uh, you prefer. Um, I actually just graduated from Alta University. I did a two years master um, in the, at the business school uh, in global management and uh, SEMS. Uh, it's a double degree. You can see the sweater that I'm wearing and you'll see that logo again. And I'll share a bit more on that a bit later on in case you're also interested in that particular um, degree, but of course, you know, this uh, discussion is about uh, studying at Alto at the Business School of Masters in general. So I'm uh, very much looking forward to uh, discussing uh, with Arip uh, what our experiences are and hearing your questions afterwards too. Okay, great. Now, when we kind of met with each other, we can go forward. The first topic of the day are studies here on Alto. Alto is home to unique study paths. So I would like to hear. Why did you choose to study at Alto University at first place? Rafael, do you want to go first? Uh, sure, yeah. Since <laughs> you see the logo again on the picture, yeah. I guess I, I can kick it off. Uh, for me, the, the reason why I chose Alto University and actually Finland um, is the degree that I wanted to do. Um, as I briefly explained earlier, it's a double degree. Uh, which you can actually study in uh, 30 different uh, universities worldwide. And I, uh, to, to say it very frankly, I just applied at the uh, free ones where it was free for me to study and uh, ended up at Alto. So it's a very uh, maybe different story uh, than others, but of course, and I mean, we're going to talk about that a bit later on. There are many reasons why I uh, chose uh, Finland after all. And, and one of them is, for example, just the different study system that they have in the Nordics. Um, I'm, I'm originally from Germany. And uh, just to give you an idea here in the Nordics and especially in Finland, it's quite common to split uh, a semester into um, multiple terms so that uh, you do not study, let's say four or five, six subjects at the same time throughout the whole semester, but you have uh, shorter sprints, so to say. So you uh, study for uh, five, six weeks, uh, only two or three subjects, and it's uh, a lot more project-like. So uh, just th that's one of the, the practices as well, what I really liked about Alta University. Yeah. Nice. What about Sorry, you? How about you? <laughs> yeah, for me, it was, it, it was slightly different <clears throat> uh, leading up to the sort of bachelor's degree in, at Alta University, and then, of course, the master's degree. So first, I actually finished my high school studies in Finland. So I'm originally from India, but our parents moved here when I was uh, quite small at three years old. Um, so I finished my high school studies and then I enrolled to a, you know, a, a different university called Arcada. So it was, it was one of those um, polytechnic universities and I studied their materials engineering for one year. And then I thought like, hey, this is not my field. I wanna be involved in more of the practical side of the business. I wanna be working and studying with different people. Um, so then I thought, why not Alta University? It's one of the most uh, prestigious universities in Finland. Um, so, so then I applied to Alto. I got into the bachelor's program um, in, at, at, 
at the McKinley campus. And then from there, I graduated in two and a half years. And afterwards, it was it was pretty much a no brainer that, you know, it was Alta University, one of the most prestigious universities in Otaniemi, really large campus, you know, one of the best platforms for, for, for studying there as well. So I thought this was it. I, I wanted to work uh, and, and study the business management. So uh, this is this this is a really nice opportunity for me to to really dive into the practical side of the business as well. Okay. Sounds like you have many reasons to be here. So what is the best part about studying at Alta University? For you, you are you? You want to continue, you? Arif? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. I, I, can, I, I, can, I can start uh, here as well. So for me, it's actually, uh, oh, sorry, some connectivity issues. So for me, it's actually the, the best part is the networking part. Um, <laughs> the networking thing is, is one of the things that you have to do um, you know, whenever you, you you build more connections, so I guess the networking side at Alto is one of the most unique sides. So because the business we we work with, or you know, we, we do a lot of course work in in different groups. There's there's people that come from a very rich, diverse background, um, and I feel like at Alto, networking first of all is is one of the best things that I've found. The second thing is the the prestige part that lifts into it so because alto is such alto you know the the professors come from such a uh, rich uh, sort of educational background they give you a lot of valuable knowledge into how you, you can operate um in a in a different business um and i feel like so networking and the platform that you can actually gain from the the, the studies in in business management and also in business overall is quite really uh, valuable I can only agree. Uh, for me, um, apart from the networking, I, th I think what it really comes down to is this community aspect that I found quite special and unique, uh, meaning that you really have these multidisciplinary opportunities that you um, have. I mean, as Arib just said, either coursework with people from very different uh, and diverse backgrounds or then through student life, which is also um, very, very diverse and fun. And you just, uh, um, yeah, have, have the opportunity to kind of um, feel around and, and take a look into different, um, different areas other than yourselves. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that uh, that makes Alta quite unique. Yes, I believe it does. So what made you uh, want to study your field? It would be. Um, the yeah, is like I, your background they, and they, now sure. you are here. Uh, for me, I mean, uh, to, to reiterate again, I, I did a, um, a master's in, uh, general, uh, in global management. And as, as you can imagine, I mean, any, any management degree is a rather generalist uh, degree. And that was a decision uh, that, I, that I took on purpose. So for me, um, it was just uh, my, my personal interest to not really uh, specify in uh, a certain area yet, or maybe never, who knows, but at least not during my studies. Um, so um, I'm a person that's not so interested in the nitty gritty detail, but really just this uh, big picture understanding and overseeing and combining things and connecting knowledge. And uh, yeah, that made me want to study management. And I mean, as Arip and I just said with this, multidisciplinary and networking uh, aspects. I think this connecting knowledge uh, was something that was certainly something I, I could I could learn and foster a lot uh, at Alto. That's good to hear, yeah. Um, yeah, so basically like elaborating on, on Raphael's points, uh, why I chose studying also relates to my previous aspect of why I shifted from, you know, a background in materials engineering to international business. Um, and then of, to information service and management. So it was again, working with a more sort of diverse background, working in, in a more practical area of the business where you get a more uh, holistic perspective of how you know, things operate within the business, whether that's on management level, whether that's on a more uh, you know, service level. So even now if I'm, when I'm studying information service and management, um, I feel like it has a lot of, um, applications uh, in, in the business side of stuff. So information service and management, uh, you can apply a lot of the data analytics, for example, into how then management or how you, know, you would make decisions uh, on a day-to-day on -day basis. 
um, regarding or taking into account all the data that is available to you. And that's one of the things that that I've seen many startups or or or, or, or many you know managers not do is is actually take the data and analyze that and then make the decisions based on that. So I feel like uh, what I'm studying right now, information service and management would have um, a huge application into the future as well. Okay, good to hear that as well. So what are your studies, your studies like? Do you have like mandatory attendance? Do you have courses, lectures, essays, group work, so individual work, or it would be yeah. good to hear that. Yeah, I, I can maybe start because I put yes. this uh, photo in. So when I was in Mikili, uh, we had mandatory sort of lectures. Uh, and as Rafael mentioned that, you know, they were more like shorter modules. So they were sprints. But now it's more like we have five different study periods. Uh, so we're currently in our first study period. And for this period, I, I only have one sort of course. And that's my SQL for, for data analytics. Um, so this is currently my schedules. As you can see, we have weekly lectures, uh, one and a half hours, and then optional sort of like hands-on, not optional, but hands-on session uh, for another, you know, one and a half hour to actually practice the, the, the MySQL. So like based on my current experience, it's been, it's been quite sort of um, theoretical, but as we go on, uh, as, as we progress to the, the future sessions, there will be more sort of practical as to when we, you know, actually apply more of the, the more of the theoretical information. Um, this MySQL data analytics uh, course will be basically it will be hundred percent of uh, it will be based on a, on a final assignment. So for this one, there is no uh, sort of group work. Um, however, you know, when I do take more courses in my second period, um, whether that's service. Uh, operation management or or for example for a, a, a few different uh, courses then that will be more teamwork so you, you can see the diversity or it will be it will be change it will always be changing from a more independent work to then more more team uh, related mm -hmm. well can you tell us how flexible are your studies and can you affect the courses you take or <clears throat> is there any uh multidisciplinary opportunities in your studies yeah uh there definitely are and uh, i think the the good thing to mention here is that you have the option but it's not mandatory so um at least in my degree a uh, certain kind of um number of credits that form part of your degree are allocated for uh, electives so courses where you can uh, choose from you know a vast number of of different courses and these can also be from from other schools so it is possible to take language courses it is possible to um i think melissa you said that you're studying architecture right yes. so I, I could technically you know join an architecture yeah course. yeah, yeah. Some, um, some of the courses yes uh what, one thing maybe to to highlight here is that um it might be the case whatever you know um degree uh, all the listeners uh, would, would end up applying to or, or studying um, some are more accredited than others but what you can still do and correct me if I'm wrong uh, Arip and Melissa but I think you still have the opportunity and that's great about the Alta to study any course and enroll mm -hmm. in almost any course so if I would like to learn how to code for example then I could enroll in a basics course in that field yes. if enrollment is open and there are enough you know open spots then i mean as i said it, it depends on the degree so i can't speak for every single degree how much uh, that will be accredited uh, for but uh, i guess my point is that you you do have the option to um yeah like further your your or like strengthen your knowledge a little bit and gather some yeah well dive into topics you you really are not familiar with if that is something you would yes, like yes if you have some more i can maybe give an example i can maybe give an example on that rafael so for instance like you brought that that really good point so for example when i was in mickley doing my international business course i i took a few courses uh from otaniemi and that was also from the business side but it was completely different because i was in a different school um but it was 
from Otaniemi. So I took, for instance, business negotiations, and I felt like that really helped me, you know, whenever I was delivering presentations in Mikkeli when I was studying international business. So it gave me a very multidisciplinary side of stuff and gave me a holistic perspective of how you can also come to the Otaniemi campus, take a few different courses from uh, various fields and then apply that to your current knowledge or your current workplace or, or whatever you would want to actually apply it in. Hmm. Definitely. Yes. And I think, uh, I mean, it, 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 come, it comes back to what we said originally, right? The networking and the community aspect and this multidisciplinary aspect, I think, is in the core of Alto and uh, I mean, there are also uh, innovation hubs at Alto and uh, diversity being it, you know, on a personality level or, or background level, but then also study level, I think, uh, fosters innovation. So um, always, always great to, to um, tap into an entirely unknown areas of our own. Yes, so now we can discuss a bit more practical things. So what is your course slow like? How academic year looks on Alto? You kind of covered this one, I think. So maybe you yeah. can just explain. Yeah, so basically, detail, like shortly. <laughs> these two snapshots that I put is very sort of brief plan or it lays an overview of my uh, studies in, the, in within the next uh, semester. So as you can see, the first, second, third, fourth and fifth cycle. So as I mentioned, I'm only taking MySQL for data analytics in this uh, cycle, in this period. And then the second one, I intend to sort of dive deep into a few different courses, such as intellectual properties, uh, logistics systems and management, and also do an internship somewhere else, uh, which is undecided yet, because I'm also working full time. But let's get <laughs> let's get back to that later. Um, the third one, as you can see, is, is a few different, again, it's an, so the yellow uh, courses are basically electives and uh, the brown ones are the core courses that, you know, we have to take from our own um, program. So you, you can see there's information um, ser services, decision making, there's a capstone course, there's a sales and business decisions. Uh, so very, very diverse into, into the aspects that we take from our program. And this is only my program. This is not Rafael's SEMS Global Management Program. Um, so this is what you will get if you do enroll to the Information Service and Management. And a little bit about the performance evaluation. Uh, the grades range from one to five. And on the left-hand side, you can see that, you know, if you get from 51 to 60, you would get a one. Um, and if you get you know, anywhere above. So for example, from 81 to 90, you'll get a four and so on and so forth. So a, a very brief evaluation how the, the grading is done as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe just to, to uh, add on, uh, on a more general level um, from, from my side, I think my perception of the course load is that it's, uh, first of all, very doable and also very flexible. And I guess you can also see that in Arib's schedule on the top where he has 24 credits in the first uh in the autumn term then in the spring he does 36 so there are certain requirements as in how many credits you need to do per term but there's also a lot of flexibility uh, which also comes with the courses that you can choose which obviously are offered uh, um, maybe in, in different um at, at different times yeah um so yeah i mean after all i mean arip is maybe the best example working full-time uh, mm -hmm. course load is doable uh, i think it's it is challenging sometimes it really depends also on the courses but i mean <laughs> that that's life i think that's in every university you know one one course is heavier than another um but and yeah. and, and generally like if we speak a little more on the technical parts then the university requires us uh, to do 60 credits in one semester and so that means 120 credits for for the two years for the master's program um, and as you can probably see on, on both the electives and the core courses, they're all six credits, uh, yeah, six credits worth. And there are also possibilities of taking courses that are either three credits or even five credits, uh, if I remember correctly. Okay, yes, thank you for this detailed explanation. So now we can move on for more about you. What does your typical day look like? Are you this is a very, very typical <laughs> day and it I'm, like this varies from day to day as well. But I've just uh, said that I wake up 
at 7 30 i i love to go for for a morning run um and afterwards you know as, as you could see from my first period i have a remote lecture uh so it's usually from 8 30 to 12 or 9 to 12 i attend that um currently lunch on campus or lunch anywhere else is also fine on in the campus there are many other possibilities as well uh, that we will talk about uh soon and so my current full-time job is working as a human resource uh generalist at a startup so i i usually do that or i'm involved a lot in that so working basically full-time but i've only highlighted four hours to fit into the schedule here um and then later in the evening uh catch up and course studies and uh i've highlighted that i also play cricket so many of you coming from india or sri lanka or many different parts of the world may know about cricket um and i yeah i also do that and then of course sleeping is essential as well Great. How about you, Rafael? Uh, yeah, for me, I, I wasn't really sure what to put here because uh, I think I have to distinguish a bit between uh, before Corona and then uh, with remote lectures. Uh, because, I mean, I started uh, my degree in 2019, so I uh, still had full on campus life and then a bit of the hybrid life as well and then also the remote life. So I had had a bit of it all. Uh, but uh, if we, if I think about the campus life, um, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. depending on, you know, what you do the night before, get up uh, in the morning. And the nice thing I think about Alt is that lectures don't start too early. So uh, if, if we have some uh, night owls <laughs> listening here, it's uh, not, not a big deal because, I mean, as Arib said, usually uh, lectures start somewhere in between 8.30 or I think even 9 is nine. usually the norm. Yeah, 9 or shortly after 9 um and then what i would do um is go with with friends uh for lunch on campus um there are so many different cafeterias that i would never know where to choose and then each cafeteria would have multiple food options so it's really going like going to a restaurant but for mm -hmm. three euros uh for lunch so um yeah i mean definitely got spoiled there and then the afternoons i i put there a couple of options uh to to also highlight that uh flexibility i was talking about earlier um since you know you do not have lectures throughout the whole week and the entire day but also have to do some self-study and some group work um yeah it, it, re it really depends so sometimes you know i was doing group work in the afternoon or i had a lecture or sometimes i was uh, doing some sport on campus there's for example um, a gym there or you can play some badminton or uh, there's a track and field so mm -hmm. everything is uh, there's a lot on campus and then uh, usually i would actually have dinner on campus too because i mean as i said quite tasty and cheap uh, so why not and then in the evenings um usual stuff i would also you know do right now so hang out with friends do some cooking sometimes there was you just had to do some some more uni work uh, or you would i would video call with my family with some friends um yeah nothing nothing too special here yeah thank you guys for this now we are going to talk about our campus our beautiful campus uh, in Otaniemi is uh, surrounded by nature and only 10 minutes metro right away from helsinki city center that might be like boring for some people so what is the campus like regarding the school facilities, services, maybe location, what kind of facilities are there offered to students? Well, I can say that the campus is lo located in like one of the prime locations in Espo. It's uh, super easy to commute by metro um, and you know by other public, public transport, such as bus as well. Um, and they are building in two years later, I think in 2025, like uh, a very cool hybrid sort of metro um mm -hmm. metro tram line that will be going through the Otaniemi uh campus like next to the Otaniemi campus as well um the campus itself so basically i first visited when the the, the business campus was built in 2020 or 2019 correct me if i if, I, if i'm wrong we came from mickley uh to actually visit the campus and we were like wow this is huge this is amazing and it felt like because we were all going to be studying there after like within the next two years we're like wow this is absolutely freaking amazing um and 
yeah, the facilities like we we have computers available for us to you know use during the courses. Um, so you can log in through the computers using your own username and and and, and password. Um, lunch and restaurants nearby. You can chill while doing your your work and the the scenery, the 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 visions of of how it's really built, especially the new business campus. Uh, business campus is is again uh, tremendous. So the amount of investment that's been put in, um, absolutely amazing. Yeah, I can only agree with you, Arip. Uh, it's it's a very pleasant studying experience, and I mean, you started to touch upon uh, the different um, facilities or you know studying opportunities, and um, there's also quiet spaces. You can book uh, um, group rooms. There's, um, I mean, for for the other schools, they also have, I mean all different kind of things so mm -hmm. the um for example if you st um, study in the school of business building um which is fairly new you always have to walk through the uh, art school the school of art to go to the cafeteria and i found that pretty cool because in that way you would always always see what others were doing and it's also quite um common at Alto that they um hex have certain exhibitions uh, from other schools mm -hmm. i think especially the school of art so you see really cool sustainable art projects in the middle of the entrance hall or or whatnot and um i, I guess that again you know underlines the this uh, multidisciplinary aspect that i just really um started to like and, and wasn't uh, used to uh, in, in germany uh, where, where i was studying so um yeah i guess that's uh, what the campus is like and i mean uh, if you look at the picture, it's it's just very modern and uh, yeah. very pretty. Very, you can very check pretty that our campus on Alto's virtual tour. If you're like interested, it's like a small sneak peek to how campus looks like. So what is your favorite thing about the campus? I think that you already yeah. answered, yeah, but we... do you have some favorite place maybe? <laughs> We, we we touched upon it. Um, I think it's it's pretty much the, the the overall facilities. So basically, you know, from the presentation rooms, uh, from a business a student perspective, to the the facilities that we can borrow. So from you know laptops to to monitors and obviously the environment itself. So you can actually be there, feel like it's a very very prestigious university. And you like once you go into the university, you're like, yeah, I belong here. So a sense of belongingness uh, when you go and 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 study at the university, and when you do your work, you 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 feel value that you your work will have an impact on other students and also uh, to some extent uh, the the university as well. So I think yeah, if I had to pick one best thing, it would be definitely the environment that the university uh, provides to the students. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I can can only agree. I I put the uh, picture on the right and the bottom there too, which the right uh, just to clarify, maybe it's not so clear. Is the cafeteria? Uh, I mean, symbolic for the good food that I mentioned mm -hmm. before. Um, and then at the bottom, this is the view from um, the bird watching tower, which is uh, five minutes walking distance uh, from the business building. And I mean, uh, since the campus is rather large it always of course depends uh, um, where you are uh, how long it would take you to get there but uh, what I was uh, what I want to express with this picture is really this um, location the campus is in uh, since it really enables you since it's um, basically in the nature uh, you really have um, the opportunity to um, you know calm down and uh, take your study breaks in a in a very relaxing way and and you're not you know in, in in the center of helsinki and everything is loud when you step mm -hmm. out to take a walk but you're actually in the middle of the nature and i found that very very pleasant and relaxing yes i can agree as well so thank you now we can move forward to uh, housing and student benefits it's good to know the students in finland are entitled to many benefits so mm -hmm. you can tell us more about that so what kind of housing options are there for students is it hard to find housing what types of um, apartments are available here and you can also share your experience how we go forward 
Rafael, maybe you can start. <laughs> uh, sure, yeah, I, I can start. Um, so the two images that you see here on this slide, um, uh, HOAS and AYY, are the two main providers for student housing in Helsinki, with uh, HOAS being one that is uh, for all students in the Helsinki area, and AYY being from the uh, student organization of Aalto University. Uh, but the bottom line is that they both offer uh, fairly cheap uh, housing for students and very different types of housing as well in also very different types of locations. So um, to give you an example, I um, lived uh, I, during the whole two years, I um, stayed uh, in a Hoas apartment um, in two different locations. And maybe a, a fun anecdote is that um, I, Hoas has a really, you know, when, when you think about, oh, who will I be living with? I'm a bit picky. Uh, or, you know, you, you really like to choose your roommate, you can do that with Hoas. They have this matching tool, which um, reminded me a bit of a dating app, to be fair, because, you know, you would fill out, you know, what you like in a future roommate and being like microwave dinner or culinary experience and then having, you know, a scale to rank that on. So a bunch of questions and then uh, also, of course, a description of yourself. And then you could actually get in touch with other people that were searching for flats and then apply with those together for a flat. And that's um, how I actually found uh, my, my roommates. Then one of them moved away a bit later, but I was really happy with that and you know, pleasantly surprised with that uh, option that they had, uh, very progressed, which I think is also a reflection of Finland in general, um, very uh, far developed uh, technology-wise, the country. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my housing situation. So really cheap. I mean, uh, I guess I can say how, how much the rent more or less is, right? Yes. So uh, I usually... Um, usually uh, the rent, you know, is between two to 400 euros. So uh, in my first place, I paid 196 euros. And then in the second, 246. So, uh, I mean, I couldn't believe my luck. Then, of course, you know, if you look for an apartment yourself, you might pay a bit more. But the bottom line is um, very affordable housing, uh, mm -hmm. especially if you compare it to the uh, private market. Yeah, Sharif, can you maybe tell us something more about AYY? If you're familiar um, with them? Absolutely, like uh, AYY and, and HOAS itself. So AYY, uh, it provides additional services as well. So for example, um, I'm sure Rafael has, has probably saved, uh, you know, experienced the same same experiences as, as me. So we don't need to pay any additional fees to the electricity. Uh, so all the electricity, water charges are included to the into the AYY. So that's that's an additional advantage. Um, there are saunas that you can that you can go uh, book for yourself. You know, if you want to go on a Wednesday evening or a Thursday evening, feel free to go there. Um, and yeah, it's it's all the housing, is, especially the ones if you uh, book near the campus, are pretty much from a five to a fifteen minute walking distance. I know that one of my friends, uh, or in fact two 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 friends, they live in Ruohalahti, which is a bit. It's a suburb area in the Helsinki region, but with Metro, you can get to the Otanemi campus in less than 10 minutes. Uh, so you, you can, so as Rafael mentioned, it's very sparse as you, as where you want to live and where you want to choose where, where, where you want to live. Um, I don't feel a difference where you would live in. I, I currently live with my parents, so the housing is super, super cheap. <laughs> um, but with HOAS and AYY, again, it's, it's, an, it's, it's, it's very easy to, 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 you know, live and, and experience the student life. And this picture I screenshotted. So this is where I live and that's how far it would take me to get to the Alto University. So it usually takes me, uh, in fact, 20 to 25 minutes by, um, or in fact, the whole journey. I think that's, that's a bit more than what Google Maps uh, initially shows. And Rafael, are you still living on campus or uh, no. because you just finished your studies? Yeah, I actually had the last semester was an exchange semester for me. So I left mm -hmm. Finland uh, Christmas last year ago. So quite a while ago. Um, but um, I have been I have not been living on campus. Um, um, has its ups and downs, you know, obviously mm -hmm. the commute uh, is is longer. But then uh, the, what I really started to appreciate is that on my way to campus I always went through the center of Helsinki. So I lived a bit in the north 
was still uh, like 35, uh, 40 minutes away. So um, it, it was okay. Of course, it wasn't uh, the closest, but then mm -hmm. I guess that also uh, might have been the reason why the rent was a bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I really started to appreciate the way through the city center because in that way, uh, you know, you, I, I felt like I wasn't just in Finland to study, but also to live, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, it makes a lot of sense. So uh, I think that you also covered this one as well. Is it easy yeah. to get to the campus? So maybe we can just quickly recapitulate, recapitulate what, what kind of... Uh, Finland has an amazing yes. infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very, very good public transport. Uh, fun anecdotes. You can track your bus to the minute and see it uh, where it is on, you know, if it's around the corner or still three streets away. So, um, yeah, very progress mm -hmm. country technology wise and infrastructure wise. Uh, it's very, very brilliant. No matter if you want to go home. Uh, you know, in, in the morning, midday, or in the middle of the night after a long uh, group work session or whatever, um, it's all possible and you always have a way to, to, um, to go home by public transport. So if you have, if you have a valid uh, internet connection, you can't get lost. Like, let's put it simply as that. Yeah. That, that's true. Just keep your battery like full. <laughs> and and a valid internet connection, uh, just uh, yeah. f, uh, for information in Finland, you always have it. Um, yes. Very very good and sufficient unlimited data. Uh, I've never heard that anywhere before. And <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so. So what kind of student benefits are there for students, except for like affordable apartments? And you, you said something about the really affordable lunch you have here. So oh. can you tell us a bit more? So I can maybe start on this. Um, so yeah, aside from the apartment and the lunch benefits, which are super cheap, um, you get discounts on, on several items within the university itself. So, you, you know, if, if you might visit the Alco University shop, there might be uh, discounts available to you. Uh, the gym memberships, you get a fair discount on that. So around 10 to 15 euros um, on the, the commute benefits. So the HSL tickets, uh, the public transport, uh, you get pretty much 50% off uh, as, a, as, a, as a student. And again, whenever I go to a restaurant, so this is a habit that I built with some, some of my uh, friends, that whenever we went to uh, a dinner or a lunch or any, any breakfast, we always asked like, hey, do you have any student discounts? And pretty much like 70 out of like 70% times we would get a, a discount from 10 to 15%. So I would always uh, encourage all the students out here to actually ask for discounts um, wherever and when, whenever they go. There's a app called the Frank app, uh, which I also encourage you to download. Um, that would give you uh, so many like very different lists from from restaurants to furnitures to housing to all the different uh, internet packages, for instance, where you can get a discount from. So it's called the Frank app. Yeah, thank you, Rafael, for, for listing that out. So you can access the uh, benefits and discounts from there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Would you like to add something? Um, maybe not on the discount side. Mm -hmm. uh, Arif <laughs> mentioned it before, uh, saunas uh, and in the student housing, uh, that also they also bear a lot of benefits. And at the bottom, you uh, can see something which uh, is an event called Slush, uh, which I attended uh, in, in 2019, so two years ago. And it's uh, just to give you a, a broad idea, it's like one of the largest startup gatherings worldwide where, uh, you know, startups pitch their uh, companies to investors. And as a student, you know, uh, or actually the, the whole staff of that um, event were students and there were non-paid and you know you would get free entrance to the event uh, in exchange for you know working a shift in a, a, a certain um, area and I just wanted to to uh, use that as an example to to really highlight these uh, student benefits on a career and event level as well other than the discounts uh, that uh, I think are recovered uh, quite nicely already. Actually, that's a really good, um, you know, 
example as well, Rafael, because I also attended one of the events in 2019 as, as a student as well. So I think, uh, yeah, networking and getting to know how many, like, because Finland is one of the, it's called one of the, the hubs of startups. And I feel like if you do get the chance to study at Alto, uh, going to Slush or, or going to these career and, and student events would be immense uh, value to your knowledge, to your skills as well as a student and as a growing professional. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So now we can discuss a bit about career opportunities <laughs> because students can explore different kinds of work opportunities already during uh, their studies. So is it possible to combine studies with work? Are you? <laughs> I would definitely say yes. Uh, there, like, there's always a, you have to balance, you have to prioritize, in my opinion. And if, if the work uh, comes first, uh, so for me, it's, it's, it's full-time work. I'm working as a full-time HR at a startup. It needs to be prioritized. And then the studies and then the social life and then the hobbies. So there's always a bit of priority, you know, listing that you need to do. But I would say definitely possible because of the flexibility uh, of, of the course schedules of how you can create your own study plan over the, over the two years. Um, I would say definitely possible because I feel like you you work because you want to gain experience and of course after studying of course you know you will be going to 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 get a work to work for a company but i also feel like yes the the so yeah combining the study is is definitely mm -hmm. a possible with work so maybe rafael can tell us more about what kind of career opportunities are there here especially for graduate students because you just finished your studies and how yeah. you can find more about these jobs where you can hear about them are there some webinar seminars or something sure like uh sure melissa i'm happy to start uh, but then i'll actually hand it over to ari because uh, oh, he inserted okay. these screenshots here but um i'm happy to share in general um thoughts on career opportunities um so for starters auto offers um career events so a fair where companies uh come I, i'm not quite sure on what regular basis this happens uh but i have uh, seen two so at least it happens on a yearly basis uh maybe even on a uh, bi-yearly basis uh, or on a uh, like uh, half yearly um and then um Going back to your courses, I think one career opportunity also that um, in the courses that you take in the business school, it's very common for companies to give you practical projects. So while you learn theoretical frameworks, you also apply them in the context of a project with a real company. And what this means is that um, you obviously, you know, are already doing some sort of networking and um, not everyone in your class is interested in going to these companies. So um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've had friends of mine who ended up working uh, in, in, in companies we did uh, university projects with. So that's uh, definitely um, another, it's a door opener. And uh, then the last thing maybe to say, and then I'll hand it over to Arip, is that um, business students at Aalto enjoy a very good uh, reputation and uh, in, in Finland and uh, companies are really keen in the Helsinki area and beyond, I guess, um, to, to hire uh, business students. So um, yeah, I've, I've only heard great things for me personally. I decided not to stay in Finland, so um, I can't share, you know, um, mm -hmm. how the actual job hunt is, um, but uh, yeah, Oh, lot, lots of friends of mine have been uh, tracked down by companies or have had a, a fairly easy uh, way into a job uh, due to being a business student at Alto University. And I would like to like uh, in, reinforce that fact as well, because Rafa, you mentioned about the, uh, the, the prestige and the reputation that the, that the university provides. So for, for, for most of the audience that doesn't know that Alto University is one of the best universities in terms of the education that it provides, not only in the Nordics, but also uh, in the world as well. So for the business side, it will, like you will see that it's ranked from 50 to 100, so in the top 100. And that's actually a huge statement that, that you know, goes into your CV or, or goes into just 
uh, being a part of, 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 uh, of the Alto community as well. Um, and these are just some practical examples that I've put. So uh, the current course that I'm taking now from the Information Service and Management, one of the courses are um, MySQL Data Analytics. And these are some of the jobs that our professor showed us that, hey, you know, if you complete this course or if you want to specialize in data analytics in, in, in particular, these are the jobs that you might consider applying. And so these, these includes on, on, the, on the top section, you see a data, a, sorry, a data entry operator and a specialist uh, database. And on the left-hand side, you see uh, the salary columns as well. Um, and down there uh, on, the, on the second photo, you, you see like master and, and, and business data analyst. So if you're interested about all these, you know, various topics, um, then I would say information service and management is one of the programs to, to, to go into. If you want a more holistic perspective, such as myself, then obviously, you know, feel free to uh, consult me about human resources or about how, how, how to actually get into the job hunting side or how to balance uh, full-time studies uh, with, with, with full-time work as well. Yes, thank you for all this information. I think that it will come useful to all of our attending students. So now we can talk more about student life. So what is the student life like here on Alto? Can you tell us more about associations, volunteering, events, sports, hobbies, whatever you do here? I mean, start fun, fun, yeah, fun, yeah. fun, inspiring, yeah, exactly. um, because you see so many bright people from different fields. Um, student life, I would still include that you have a steep learning curve in general as a student at Alto. And um, yeah, maybe another word, endless in terms of opportunities. Like you, I actually did that mistake in the first uh, semester that I attended everything and then I was socially exhausted and <laughs> the semester after you know I had to refrain myself a bit uh, because there are just so many things you can do um, so yeah I mean I, it's a um, it's a luxurious problem I'd say mm -hmm. uh, to have the opportunity to choose what you want to do and uh, I guess that summarizes it quite nicely uh, how the student life was for me yeah mm -hmm. I think if, if, if I want to say one thing in addition to what Rafael said, and I agree with him as well, um, is that don't focus on the studies too much because after all, you know, the studies are going to be there for two years. You're going to gain all the knowledge, um, but you are still going to forget whatever you learn. So make whatever from the experiences, from, from networking, from hanging out with your social, from, from like making friends uh, to then applying all those experiences into a more, you know, a, a, a bigger picture as to if it's getting a job, if it's starting your own business or if it's doing what you want to do. So I would say really try to find yourself if, if that's not too yeah. philosophical. No, no, um, I was going to say the same, like grow as a person, <laughs> but <yeah. laughs> maybe that's a bit too cheesy too. <laughs> yeah. That's why. So what do you do on your free time? Uh, I, I, can, I can start on this. So mm -hmm. last week I was in uh, Malaga and we had a European cricket tournament. So this is part of the cricket thing. The cricket thing that I do is also I play cricket for Finland. Um, so you can see on the, on the top, uh, top hand picture that we played against the England X side, which was a pretty big game. And we also like troll them a little bit. So we teased them, as you can see, like this is a very uh, unusual setting. Um, so yeah, that, that tournament was, was pretty amazing. Um, and I, I basically play cricket uh, whenever I have time. It's one of my passion or I'm, I'm passionate about cricket. And when I'm not doing that, I'm usually investing and looking into stocks and <laughs> seeing how the market is doing otherwise. Nice, Rafael. Have you cool. been a yeah, part that's of, a, that's of a, some um, associations or clubs or something here on campus? Um, I, I was, yeah, uh, for my particular uh, degree. So uh, for, for this uh, SEMS uh, network, which is uh, the students from out university that study that, but then also in the other schools that I mentioned, you mm -hmm. know, since there are multiple countries in that alliance, um, I 
I uh, took on a role as, um, as uh, head of corporate and social responsibility, and we organized some documentary nights and uh, some uh, sustainable cooking events and whatnot. Um, so I guess, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, brings me back to my answer to, uh, to the last question, right? So you can do an endless amount of things. Um, and then you're still left with all the things you would usually do. I mean, I still did a bunch of cooking with uh, my, well, I have to say new friends from, um, from the degree. Um, going to bars, have board game evenings, do sports together, um, just uh, the usual as well, mm -hmm. yeah. Great, so Alta is home to a diverse and multidisciplinary community of students, staff and faculty. So we can talk more about Alta community right now. So how were you welcomed to the community when you got here, like arriving in Finland? Did you have any tutors? How was your roommates? Are the Finns hard to get to know? I think that a lot of people are worried about it because of all these different stereotypes we hear. So, so. Ari, do you want to start with KY? I saw you just posted. Uh, yeah, yeah. To the group. So, so KY is basically, how, how should I put this? It's one of the largest or it's one of the unions of, of the business side. So basically KY organizes a lot of uh, a lot of networking events, a lot of career events. And if you become a, a part of the KY, then you have access uh, to, again, attend many of these sessions that would help you as a, as a business uh, professional. Um, you can volunteer for a lot of stuff as well. So if, you, if you're more into the marketing side, if you're more into the finance side, you have an opportunity with KY to develop your your skills, um, and yeah, KY invests in a lot of uh, things related or pertaining to the Alto business students. So, for example, they they I'm sure they've invested in in a few of the facilities as well that's brought up at the Alto, uh, like Alto departments. So KY has a, has a pretty amazing experience. Um, Rafael, do you have anything expect to expand on KY? <laughs> Um, not necessarily with regards to KY, but just maybe the welcoming aspect a bit more. Um, when you start your degree in fall, there's this massive, and I think in the spring as well, this massive welcome week. Uh, so uh, all these pictures here are actually from the welcome week. Uh, so there's a bunch of events, a bunch of uh, student unions. You uh, see at the bottom right, you know, that KY, the business uh, students, they wear these green overalls, which is a very typical thing for the Finnish student culture and a very uh, unfamiliar one for me, you know, that uh, they have these very um, clear separations, but then you, when you always, when you always go out with your uh, groups for special events, you wear these overalls. So at the bottom left, you then see, uh, I think some engineering degree with their uh, mm -hmm. white overalls. Um, so definitely I felt welcome from the first day. Um, a lot of events, a lot of things to attend, luxury of choosing again. Um, and I think Milica, you asked something about uh, the Finnish stereotypes. Yeah, do you right? have like some Finnish friends here? Is it easy here to make friends in general, especially with Finnish students? Uh, it is. Um, it is. I'm, I'm going to give you the honest answer, though. I think uh, it's a bit due to the bubble that the university is. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't per se say that the Finnish students at the Aalto University are representative for the Finnish culture in all aspects, maybe, uh, especially in this approachability and uh, making friends. Uh, I would argue that Finns in comparison to maybe more Southern cultures are um, uh, a bit harder to approach, uh, but then I think the friendships uh last maybe longer i don't know uh, that's my personal experience mm -hmm. you know that uh they have a a, a hard core but a, a hard shell but a soft core um so that it's a bit you know uh you need some time to get uh to know them but um at uni um regardless if it was business school or whatnot i uh i perceived almost everyone as extremely uh, open-minded and approachable so uh, I uh, definitely didn't see you know these stereotypes um, uh, kind of confirmed in the university mm -hmm. environment but then uh, in some other areas of the country I did yeah would you like to add something yeah I think it's it's also about like building trust uh, 
like if, if when you talk about Finnish stereotypes, I I don't believe in stereotypes. Mm-hmm. So I feel like if you get close to anyone and you know they 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 are comfortable uh, with you or around you, then you can always build a very uh, trustable, a very fond relationship with that person. And I've like my my friend circle would involve one third of of the best Finnish friends uh, that I've seen throughout my time. And the rest are, of course, international or they have a very mixed uh, background as well. So I feel like you you still need to be able to give yourself to them mm-hmm. to, to make the first step. And I feel like um, many of the confusion comes from that nobody makes that first step like, mm-hmm. hey, how are you? Or hey, yeah. what is your name? And those are the, those are the very uh, interpersonal skill, skill level on a very basic aspect that you need to mm-hmm. learn. Uh, to introduce yourself and to make the the, the, the trust aspect, uh, you know, come true. Thank you, really beautiful answers. So what is like to be an international student here? I mean, did reality face your expectations? Yeah, it yeah. did. <laughs> um, oh, wait, you said if it matched, right? Like yeah, yeah. My expectations were met. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I'm a person that doesn't have a lot of expectations, Mm -hmm. or I didn't have much when I arrived there, but they were exceeded. Um, The pictures that I put here, you know, is this, uh, these green overalls uh, that that you saw before, Uh, maybe a quick anecdote here. Um, It's a very common thing that for whatever event, you would get a badge, and then you would sew it onto the overall. And uh, that's cool because, I mean, Arip, you studied at Mikili, right? So uh, yeah. people who have studied at Dalto before, they're green and have studied business before, their green overall would be, you know, covered with these um, batches from three, four years ago. And then, you know, people would meet and say, oh, what? You went to this event? Me too. And um, as an international student, you were part of that community early on. Um, and I think uh, KY, uh, for this particular example, is, is to thank for that, that they really ensure that uh, the international students are integrated and feel uh, welcome. So um, definitely no complaints from my side, no. And and the thing is, like, there's, there's so many exchange students coming as well uh, from, from different parts of the world. And... It's it's not only about being a Finnish or inter, or an international student at, at, at Alto, but it's also about engaging with them, making them or interacting with them, so making more more and more new new networks and connections. And that's one of the baselines that we touched upon uh, before with with Rafael that you know networking with Finnish students, with the professors, with different companies, and also with students that come from abroad, um, and even when we go abroad. To, to, to different universities. So it's it's all about engaging with the diversity, understanding different cultures. Um, it's it's really about everything when it, when it comes, or when you ask about being an international student, it's about representing the Alto uh, University with, with a sense of pride, with a sense of belongingness. And then of course, with a sense of responsibility as well, like, hey, I'm, I'm actually studying at Alto. I, I, I deserve to be here and I want to, basically make make the best out of my time uh, here. Okay, thank you. And I believe this is the question of possible to survive without knowing, knowing Finnish here. Yeah, these are some of the <laughs> article pictures that I added. So Sc- Scandinavian countries in general are are pretty good in terms of when it comes to speaking in, in English. It's just that some people might be afraid in interacting in English, which is why you might feel like uh, oh, okay, you know, a certain Finn or a group of Finns may not speak Finnish at all, but that is that is not true at all, in my opinion. Um, and Ule, uh, one of the largest sort of uh, news or, or, or medias in Finland, they highlighted that Finland actually ranks sixth in English skills. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I believe it's, yeah, from 80 different countries. Um, so the Finnish, the English speaking levels are very, very good in, in Finland. And I think Rafael, you, can, you agree. You can vouch for this as well. I don't speak Finnish, and I think that's yeah. the best example. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, I, I chose uh, n- not to study it, um, but um, I mean, as you said, Arip, it's more than possible to survive with it. You know, surviving sounds like 
you're struggling on a day-to-day -day basis, but it's really the opposite. Um, and it's interesting because I perceived it, uh, I don't know, when, when you said, you know, that um, some people don't like to speak that much or don't, uh, yeah. you know, do that. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if you perceived that in the university environment or somewhere else, because one thing I was pleasantly surprised of was that they were very respectful um, whenever one person did not speak Finnish and they didn't, I assume because of their confidence in the language, then they uh, switched very seamlessly to English, even if it was, you know, me in a group of four Finns. So uh, maybe that was just my university friends. And um, one thing you definitely uh, do have here, again, is a bit of the bubble with, of course, um, you know, business students or uh, well, in general students who, who use English more in their lives, uh, having slightly higher uh, or better English skills, but in the grocery store, in, uh, in a cafe, anywhere, uh, people speak English. And that's um, very impressive and very comfortable to, to navigate through. Yeah. through the city and through and and if you need more reinforcement because i was in malaga i went to spain uh last week uh the <laughs> the levels of people of, of the levels of english is very different like once you go to a restaurant in, in malaga i know this is slightly off topic but they expect you to speak spanish and mm -hmm. in finland it's it's completely different once you go to a restaurant or somewhere you know it's almost like an english is one of the primary uh, languages even even though it's, it's not one of the national languages you would still you still feel at home in terms of that yes there are people that speak english so it's very easy to navigate it's very easy to be around yes thank you for your great answers and now we can move on to q and a so let's go through the questions you sent in the chat. I want to say uh, in the beginning that there have been some questions about admissions that our, our students can answer. So as I said in the beginning of this webinar, there will be another webinar with the student admission services on Friday. So you can join that webinar as well, or you can send them questions on admissions at alto.fi. So now we can begin. The first question is, if we have taken enough courses to complete the 60 credits every semester, but would like to attend a lecture in a different subject, say architecture, economic, finance, is it okay to attend one? To, Are you, to, my, uh, Arif, you're muted. Uh, yeah. If you wanted to say oh, something, yeah. maybe I can start. To my knowledge, yes. Um, you can always, you know, mm -hmm. if your time allows it, attend anything uh, that's my understanding i mean i took a, a portuguese language course because i i was interested in the language and as long as it doesn't clash with these 60 credits that you need to take and if you know certain courses are mandatory to attend or whatnot then uh i think feel free to take whatever you're interested in um if, if it fits your schedule yeah yeah, just to uh, elaborate on that, you have to look at what the uh, core courses are. So for, I mean, of course, the general is 120 credits for your entire program. And there might be that there's between 70 to 84 core course, the core courses that you need to take, uh, which are mandatory, and then the electives. Uh, so whatever courses that you would take as as a nickel, you suggested, architecture, economics, finance, they would come in your electives. So your electives are between 12 to 18 credits. And uh, so you're free to take any, any one of those courses, but they have to be approved by your program uh, director or, or by, by your program coordinator. Uh, but yes, it's very much possible. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is about working. Do students have enough time to work during bachelor's and master's degree? <laughs> Yes, yes, uh, yes, you do. I would recommend it. Um, I would recommend it. However, you need to sacrifice a few things. So as I said, you need to prioritize your, your main things. So for example, if you do work full time, then, for, then I miss out on some of the student events or socializing with the students or socializing with, with peers. I miss out on that. Like I need to accept that as well. Uh, that's part of my work. So I need to do work, studies, and I miss out on a few things. Um, 
I would recommend working part time. That would be the best way to to go on about it. I know three or four of my friends doing the same course that work part time and are still able to complete all the courses and still take even more uh, modules than what I'm taking right now. Um, but very, very much possible because of the flexibility that, that me and Rafael talked about earlier. Okay, thank you. The next question is, uh, did you take the GRE to be admitted to the School of Business? How did you prepare towards writing and passing it? Um, tell me again, is the GRE the equivalent to the GMAT or is it the equivalent to the language course? Uh, so is it an I equivalent to the it's TOEFL? Like the, um, it's not TOEFL, it's, um, it's a test you take to like work on to, in some certain skills. I'm not sure, I, I heard about it and my, some of my friends did it. It's not the language test, it's just like overall, probably you didn't take okay, it because, perfect. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Nico, yeah, you clarified. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I didn't take the GRE, so I, but I did take the GMAT. Uh, can you repeat the questions, though, Melita? Mm -hmm. like, uh, it's okay, okay. Mind. Uh, did you take the GRE to be admitted to the School of Business? How did you prepare towards writing and passing it? Uh, okay, so first part, yes, I took it. Uh, second, how did I prepare? Um, I took uh some full time to prepare for it but also started while i was still working in total i prepared for three months and i uh i bought uh books so there are uh books on, on gr on gmat and i assume also on gre uh, where they um prep you for the certain sections and uh i i assume nico the uh, question is coming from from you i think one of the first things uh, you should do when you take such a test is really figure out what your weaknesses are so that you can work on those. Uh, that's what I missed out a little bit and would do differently um, this time. So to really, in the first stage before you dive in and try to learn everything, try to figure out what are you most lacking. And uh, for the GMAT, you know, there were different parts of it. There was a, a very heavy language um, part, um, I, th I think it was called verbal or something. So there you did uh, grammar related stuff and uh, on, a, on a very high level I have to I have to admit and then also a, a math part uh, then um, uh, like a critical thinking or combining aspect and an essay um, so yeah I mean I, I could go on about this and <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to also share I mean if you want uh, whoever asked the question you can just uh, drop me a message and then I'm happy to elaborate a bit more on it but yeah, maybe to to um, to sum up, figure out what your weaknesses are, um, try to tackle those, uh, use resources um, like books. Uh, they really help, I think, uh, because in the end, you know, it's not just about knowing the language or knowing um, math, but it's understanding the concept of the test and learning your math and your you know your language skills in that framework of the test, meaning, you know, that you have, that you're under time pressure, the questions are asked in a certain way that you can also do some educated guessing. So um, yeah, there are many tips and tricks uh, that I can't cover <laughs> right now, but um, yeah, look on the internet or drop me a message and I'm happy to uh, elaborate more on it. Thank you, Rafael. So next question is, uh, is it possible to complete the bachelor's and master's in less than five years? Uh, <clears throat> for sure it is, um, because I did my bachelor's in Mikili, which was two and a half years. And my master's or your master's, anyone who does the master's, it's supposed to be two years. So technically we're talking about a time period of four and a half years. Uh, some people, they take a bit longer. So for example, I know that I'm, I'm working full time. So uh, I have the flexibility according to my study rights that I can do it within seven years, uh, both bachelor's and master's. So you need to really see what, what your flexibility is. Because I know talking to some of my uh, students, some of my friends, some of my close friends who, who got an admission for a scholarship, they have to complete the master's in two years, right? But because I'm a Finnish uh, citizen, 
I have the flexibility to complete my master's in, in four to five years. Okay, thank you. The next question is also for Arif. Uh, is the work you've taken up internship of, or a part-time job, which allows you to continue at the firm post studying at Alto? Yeah, so again, as I mentioned, um, it's, it's a full-time job as I'm working in the, in the HR department and it still allows me to take courses. Uh, I just need to enroll myself uh, through the Alto services and say like, hey, I will be attending both of the spring, uh, fall and, and spring semester. And I need to complete uh, my, my courses for the year. So because currently it's, it's a hybrid uh, program. So we have courses that are remote, also courses that uh, are in campus for, for some time. I think overall my workplace allows me to uh, complete my studies also, you know, in a, in a very efficient manner as well. Okay, thank you. The next question is about the housing. Can a partner or a family member also live with the students in student housing or is it only provided for students? I have the knowledge that you can uh, mm -hmm. apply with the with the partner or or with if you have a child, for instance, you you are eligible to apply. Um, however, I would still check or verify this information on the website of AYY and, and OS. So you don't yes. take my word if for it. If you're not completely. familiar, like in your experience, it's the best to check like with the AYY or HOAS mm -hmm. on their websites. I believe they have like explanation for these things, how it works. Sure. Yeah. So and maybe, the... maybe, maybe one more thing I, I can add, uh, Milica, is that I know that the that the housing uh, lines on AYY can, or, or the queues, they can be so long. Um, yes. So if you are looking for an opportunity to move in within the next month or two, then on Facebook, uh, you can always find these groups, like, you know, there are flatmates in Helsinki or housing in Finland, for instance, is, is one of the largest groups in, uh, or for, for housing uh, for students. Uh, so you can always find a more convenient place from there if you're looking for an immediate uh, move from from your country to to Finland for 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 a study place. Yes, thank you. We kind of missed that one when we talk about housing. And the last the last question for today is: Is Finnish language required to find a job during studies? Rafael, maybe you can start with that. <laughs> um, it it might. Uh, I think is the is the answer. Um, having quite many international friends who also were looking for jobs uh, in in uh, Helsinki, um, some companies, uh, depending on you know who they're what they are doing and who their customers are, require you to speak uh, Finnish. However, that's definitely not for every company the case. And then also. Um, yeah, I mean, it depends, you know, do you want to go into a corporate or are you just looking for a job to pay the bills or, you know, whatnot and just want to work in a cafe, for example, there, um, I doubt that you will need Finnish skills. So um, I guess the answer is it depends, <laughs> but uh, it can very much be the case that it is required. Yes. Depend, that's, that, that's very true as well, Rafael. And I, and I think as a, as a job seeker, uh, if, if, uh, if all of you do get to be a part of the Alto community, you should you should be proactive when it comes to the the job seeking uh, side as well. So while many um, you know recruiters may list that Finnish is required, uh, in in some cases that is not the case at all. Because uh, you know what or if you or basically like just ask them like hey is actually Finnish a requirement? Because I feel like I meet all your requirements except the Finnish one. They might say that actually we don't. So I've had many of these experiences in the past. So I, I just want to encourage the more proactive side, uh, being more proactive in, in your job seeking and just, you know, giving a call to the person, giving an email or sending an email uh, to actually ask about the Finnish language itself. Okay, thank you for all of your answers. You did great. So now we can talk about what, hmm. Just a second.
Okay, well, what is next? Well, we suggest you to be in contact with us and remember to apply to Alto University. If you have some questions, again, regarding the admission services, you can send email to altoadmissions at uh, alto.fi, or you can join the webinar on this Friday as well. If you have some questions about student life that we haven't answered, you can always chat with the squad members on Unibody. We can find us at uh, Alto University website. Uh, soon we will start to have a coffee with the squad sessions. So follow, follow uh, the, the information on the website to see when this uh, Coffee with the sports squad sessions will be available. And also for our latest news, upcoming events, and you, uh, you follow the useful links and check out again also.fi slash studies. And thank you for joining this webinar today. We hope to see you all on campus in the next academic year. I want to take, thank you, Arif and Rafael, for your great answers. And I believe that's all. For today, I see Arib that there's another yeah, question for you. Question. I, I can answer that. There's no problem with that. So I, I, I got my citizenship by living here for a very long time. Um, and then I thought, why not apply for the uh, citizenship anyway? Because remember, I moved to Finland when I was three years old. So my parents, they, they, they lived there, they got the citizenship. And then I automatically received it uh, from them. So that's that's the short answer in a, in a nutshell. Okay, thank you for this additional answer. So that will be it for today. Hope to see you all around. Goodbye. Thank you, guys.